Knock, knock. Who's there? Weekly, weekly who? The weekly bone is back at you. It's pretty cheesy, but it's time to do the weekly bone. Hello and welcome to the Weekly Bone here on the Phone Dog YouTube channel. My name is Marco Hanna, your lovely, lovely host here at Phone Dog. And I hope you guys had a great weekend so far and a great Monday. But it, it's time, it's Tuesday, it's time for the Weekly Bone, the episode you've all been waiting for. So let's get started. This week in the world of Phone Dog, Aaron takes a look at the Sony Xperia Z. This is basically the biggest flagship Sony has ever done. There was the Xperia T back last year, but this is the Xperia Z. What does the Z stand for? Well, Z. Awesome. Amazing. Actually, it's probably the best Android smartphone that Sony Xperia has ever made, ever since they dropped that Ericsson brand from the Sony brand. Xperia Z is basically the brand new flagship device. It has a 5-inch full 1080p display. It's 440 pixels per inch, and it has a massively fast 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor. 2 gigabytes of RAM is hidden under the hood, and this thing is completely monstrous. Also, Sony is known for their great and awesome cameras, and this one is no exception. Carl Zeiss lens is in the back of this thing, and it is rated at 13.1 megapixel, which means you can take those beautiful 13.1 shots and full 1080p video, and it's all its glory. And then you can also watch it on that beautiful 5-inch 1080p display. Now, Sony's come back in the Android market with the Xperia Z, brings Android 4.1, no 4.2.2, on this one, but 4.1 comes on there with their own Sony custom UI. Now this one is a little bit more toned down, but there's still a couple of features from Sony. Now the only downsides that we see on the Xperia Z so far is the lack of LTE in the US. You can actually get LTE in some other countries that are non-US, but in the US you have to settle for HSPA+. This is a complete step up from all the other Sony Xperia devices. This thing is beautiful to hold and it's very, very fast and it's well built. We hope to see some US carry interactions in the very soon future and near future, but for now you can still get it unlocked, but again we really want to see this device coming onto US shores. Now some more news about the Sony Xperia Z. This time Time, it's in the cage. Yes, it's in a cage in a dogfight with the Google Nexus 4. The build quality on both these devices are basically the same. They're both made out of some glass and metal, which means they are right up each other's alleys in build quality. Obviously, the Xperia Z is a little bit bigger at a 5-inch device. The Nexus 4 is at 4.7, but the internals are both basically the same. A 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Pro processor on both devices and 2 gigabytes bytes of RAM. Obviously, the Sony Xperia Z is a little bit more consumer-oriented because it's not a pure vanilla or hacker phone, as some people like to call the Nexus range of devices, but it's definitely a different sort of device. Also separating these two devices is definitely the price. You can grab a Sony Xperia Z for about $780 off of online on Negri Electronics. You can grab a unlocked Google Nexus 4 for only $300. There's a big price difference between these two devices, but the values of the customization on the Sony Xperia Z and the app ecosystem and the ecosystem with their PlayStation Network, the Sony Xperia Z is a little bit more consumer oriented and it's a lot more easy just to pick up and go instead of getting a Nexus 4 where everything is pure vanilla and you sort of have to learn Google's take on what an Android phone should be. The whole world is waiting until Thursday where we get to see some brand new Samsung technology. We're talking about the Galaxy S4, of course. We will be there, Aaron will be there, the whole world can be watching on Samsung's YouTube channel because that phone will be announced on Thursday and we cannot wait to get our hands on one of those things. Now, the rumors about the Galaxy S4 are pretty standard overall. A 5-inch display is basically the standard. We are not guessing for anything smaller than the 4.8-inch device that we have on the Galaxy S3. We're also putting 1080p because that's basically the new industry trend of a full 1080p display on your cell phone. 2 gigabytes of RAM and a quad-core processor. So we hope to see some really good improvements on the quad-core processor that's supposed to be 
battery efficient, but also a blazing, blazing fast CPU chip in there. And we're also getting some things a little bit better build quality. Uh, Samsung's design chief actually dropped some hints that we get to see some a little higher material, top notch materials. We saw some rumor and pictures and leaks that it'll still be plastic, but hopefully the plastic is a little less cheap than the before, but ugh, we're crossing our fingers and we have to wait and see. Obviously, all these rumors are still speculation. We do not have any word confirmed from Samsung or anybody of what this device might actually be. We actually don't know. It might be an iPhone 5, to be honest. Who knows? But we will be there live, so you better stay tuned and locked on Phone Dog's YouTube channel and PhoneDog.com and make sure to wait and see all of the great content from us and be hands-on on the Samsung Galaxy S4. Well, that's all the time I have for this week of the Weekly Bone. Thanks for watching. I'm your lovely host, Mark O'Hanna. You can follow me on Twitter at GE Mark O'Hanna right here somewhere or maybe on my face if Aaron puts up. Green Somewhere on this you. weird looking face. My name is Mark O'Hanna again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Alright, cool. Man. Now, where's that Galaxy S4?